UMass Lowell Hockey River Hawks this weekend. Just one game, UMass Amherst at the Songhear Center. That is on Friday night at uh, 7.30. Joining us now, the head coach of your River Hawks, Norm Bates and Norm, welcome. Good to be with you, Bob. One opponent this weekend, one game this weekend. Is that a little bit of a welcome relief of the hectic, constant push of back-to-back of -back games during the weekend? Is this kind of a little bit of a break that one needs as the dog days of January and early February move into the stretch run? Yeah, we'll take the one-game weekend because I think we got some guys who can get healthier. But I enjoy the two games. In fact, I'd, uh, I'd enjoy three games in a week if they could ever get there in college. Last weekend, we played on the Big Ice surface uh, out at UMass Amherst. The standard NHL pro-sized rink this weekend. Does it make a difference? Should we expect a different type of game? Not really. I think you uh, you saw a lot of forecheck, a lot of puck pursuit, a lot of aggressiveness on the big sheet, and you'll see those same things, just more of it. You had said to me before, the I think probably in our weekend video sit down, you said that uh, Massachusetts, one of the quickest teams, one of the good team speed, but quick decision making. That was on display during the weekend. Does that present unique challenges? Yeah, it does. They, they do a very good job of moving the puck, and, and I thought they, uh, uh, they certainly did a good job moving the puck in the neutral zone, which hadn't been the case possibly in the, the first game we played. But this past game, we really had to catch up to that. This past game, five different goal scores, and, and again, Michael Fallon with a goal and a couple of assists. He had an assist the night before. Each week you seem to get different, or this hockey club seems to get contributions from different people. Again, it is that depth that is so effective. Yeah, it's important because we've had some guys out, so some others have stepped up and uh, progressed and fill in those roles. And it's very important to get those younger guys uh, able to fill the roles, and I think they've done that admirably. This past weekend, did we do the things you as a coach wanted to see us do? Take the score out of it for a moment, just the way we approached the game. Yeah, I enjoyed the Saturday. Friday, I wasn't too keen on the game, to be honest with you. I, I didn't think we, we had a lot of lulls in the game, and I didn't think we covered our neutral zone very well. In any event, we, we cleaned up some of those things on Saturday, and Saturday, I felt our third period was the best period of the night. This team seems to respond well to a little adjustments. Is this a very teachable team? Yeah, coachable is, is probably the word you could use. Um, I do feel they're coachable, and, and they make adjustments on the fly. They've been able to uh, to adjust, and it's a it's a, a key component come playoff time. You know, we've talked about because of injuries, people having to adjust to changing roles, whether it's power play or penalty killing, or they're on the ice in the last minute of play. It seems as though you've got a lot of people that are capable of doing a wide variety of things. I thought the power play has looked good, penalty killing has looked good. It doesn't matter if the personnel's changed. Is it because of the system we used? Or is it because of the people that we insert in that system? Well, I think we're trying to coach up a lot of kids into the different situations. And then being adaptable is, is a key component. I think there's good character in that locker room, and the kids are, are obviously trying very, very hard. But, um, you know, them being interchangeable in their roles is, is a huge deal. And it has to continue to be like that uh, till the very end of the year if we're going to have success. Are the particular points of emphasis for this week of practice? Yeah, this week of practice, we, we want to certainly do a better job, tidy up our, our neutral zone and our defensive zone. And if we do that, we'll get more chances in the offensive zone. I thought we did a pretty good job of generating offense in the offensive zone. You saw some puck movement. You saw some uh, uh, low to high play. You saw some uh, some uh, width of the ice play, weak side releases. Uh, you know, so if we keep doing some of those things, we'll have success. And if we can clean up our neutral zone and defensive zone, we'll have more chances at the at the offensive zone. End. That was a couple of weeks back. People were waving uh, the flag about, we need to score more goals. We've been scoring goals. Is there something we did differently, or is it... It's hockey. Sometimes you play hard, you create opportunities, and the puck just won't go in. And then other times you do the exact same things, and the puck does go in. No, I, I think that's a... I wouldn't say a fabrication, but it's it's a mindset of the media that they're in for the here and now. And uh, some of the things just progress through a hockey season. So sometimes your power play is going to be in a lull, you got to fix that. Your penalty kill is going to be in a lull, you have to fix that. Your five-on-five -five scoring is in a lull, you have to fix that. Your defensive zone needs some work, you, you got to fix that. There's always something to fix, and that's hockey. That's part of it. When it all comes uh, together at the end of the season, you hope, then you've got a pretty good product, and we feel we're, we're inching along uh, the right way. I talked to Michael Fallon this week for our radio intermission. He's one of uh, one of the players that we talked to, and, and talked to him about he had a good offensive weekend. He says 
and this is a line I've heard you say, and I've heard Scott Wilson and various other players say, all offense comes from defense. A moment ago you were talking about tightening up certain things in the neutral zone. I guess every piece is connected. If we want to score at one end, it all starts way back at the other end, and step by step through each zone doing the job leads to the end result of a goal. Yeah, it really does. I, I feel that those guys are learning to play away from the puck very well. And when you do that, you get more chances with the puck. And when you own the puck, you'll have a, a great deal of chances throughout a hockey game. When we talk to, uh, if you talk to fans, they, they remember the spectacular play that led to a goal. I guess for you, it's the little details. When we talk about the little details, what are those sorts of things that you look for? Those components that have to be there to be successful. Yeah, there, there's quite a few of them. We we need more time in this uh, in this video clip. But in any event, a couple of them is finishing your checks in the neutral zone. It's uh, stopping and starting in the offensive zone. It's uh, you know having structure in the D zone and uh, stopping on net for rebounds, doing the little things that produce offense. And when you produce enough chances you will get an opportunity to uh, to be opportunistic throughout the game. And uh, I thought we did that on Saturday.